Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Asmodee. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome to the Brotherhood Without Banners. So, we were all waiting for this one, and I'm really happy I have uh, Randall with me, and I have Pasha with me, because both of them are really, really digging deep in the last few weeks and months even, right? Is it months already? But who cares, right? So they're really digging deep into the matter of the Brotherhood Without Banners. So now, today, we will cover all units we have, not just the starter. We will cover all the attachments and all the NCUs. We will try to keep it briefly, but I guess there will be a pretty vibrant discussion going on. So let's kick it right off. Everyone knows you, everyone knows Pasha, everyone knows knows Randall, so we do not need to introduce yourselves. It speaks for itself. And congratulations, Randall, to the 2,000 subscribers on your channel. So totally deserved, man. Keep Thanks, going. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate keep, it. Keep going. You too. Um, so, the Brotherhood Without Banners. The Brotherhood Without Banners has its official release date on December 6th in uh, each and every market, I guess. So we will get the starter box. We will get the Brotherhood Without Banners Sworn Knights, a calf unit, and the Brotherhood Without Banners Heroes 1, which brings us to four units, uh, a few attachments, three NCUs, four four NCUs, and um, quite, a, quite a good... good um, good and like common thing that Simon did. It's pretty close to what they did with uh, the Boltons, right? The Boltons also got um, mm -hmm. a starter box. They got uh, another unit with the Spearman and the Heroes box. So pretty similar to what they did before. But, uh, and we will have that discussion throughout the whole video. Uh, it might be that the Brotherhood came a little bit stronger than the Boltons. So let's see what, what, where, where we're heading with this. All right. So, before we kick off uh, with the units and all the and all the and all the um, all the NCUs and stuff, we will focus on the base deck. So maybe Randall, you can kick it off with giving us a general overview of the cards. What do they have, like in terms of healing cards, control cards, mm -hmm. attacky cards? How is the overall tactics deck designed? Yeah, so at a at a high level, the tactics cards are very. Uh, I would say it's a mix of healing, mobility, and protection. So the, what it really lacks, I would say, is damage. There's really no like specific damage cards at all. There's very very little in the way of token generation, and then uh, very little in the way of control. So there's yeah, there's it's very much focused, I would say, on self-preservation and mobility uh, overall. But it's a very, I would say, it's a very focused deck. Like it knows, it, it has a very specific, uh, I would say, kind of vibe to it and a mm -hmm. personality. Mm -hmm. So, Pasha, what is like when you when you rank it, when you would tier the cards? And let's probably start with this, um, let's say, healing aspect. Mm -hmm. Can you guide us through? What is the strongest card? What do you need to fish for? What do you want to keep in your hand? Is there maybe something that you would say, you need this card later in the game, you need this card as early as possible? Can you guide us through this? Uh, it really depends on the situation. Uh, I feel like the um, base deck is kind of um, very flexible uh, in, in terms of uh, where you can play certain cards. So it, it, uh, it has every trigger possible. So you won't have um, two different cards with the same trigger mm -hmm. at any time. And, <clears throat> and there's not really, as a, it depends on the matchup. If you play Lannisters, you, you certainly want to finish for the protection cards. If you play against Targaryens, you uh, want to fish for the movement cards. And uh, against uh, Baratheons or other uh, faction, the aggressive factions, you probably want to heal for, uh, fish for the um, healing cards. So it's really matchup dependent mm -hmm. and um, you Depends on that. Okay. So I know there was a lot of, or there is a lot of discussion about the Forgotten Fellowship. So the Forgotten Fellowship uh, enables you to start off any round. You can do, uh, or one friendly combat unit performs a march or a retreat action and then becomes weakened. So I know there is a lot of discussion going on. If you could like, like in, in, in a really quick way, stand probably in the, in the, in the, in the deployment zone of your opponent. Um, with let's say the calf or whatever. So how do you see the Forgotten Fellowship in the in the in the aspect of the 
full design of the of the base deck, Randall? Uh, well, I, I see it in a it kind of fulfills a couple of different uh, needs. You know, it, it can be used as a as like a like a survival button you push to get something out of out of combat really early uh, to to protect them. Like if if the other player is first player in a round, you could potentially get something out of combat so it doesn't die. You could also use it to uh, completely outflank an opponent's unit early, like at the top of the round. So if you're first player, you can send something all the way into, into the rear of your opponent's line. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you're first player, you can take one of your combat units that's like a heavy hitting combat unit, like a Lance Cav unit from uh, the Baratheon or Starks and retreat them out of combat and then open the round by charging back in to kill something, maybe. Uh, it's just, I think it's a very versatile card, but it's a, it's a very, very powerful card depending on how you use it. So I, it's, uh, I, I think to me, it's it's my favorite card of the deck, uh, just from uh, the standpoint of how much you could do with it and how, mm. how many different how versatile kind of cool it moves. is. Yeah, yeah, mm. the, the versatility mm. of it. Uh, so for me, it's my favorite card of the of the deck. Mm -hmm. Cool to hear. So Pasha, um, let's 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 quickly talk about but the realm remains. But the Realm Remains is the quest card, revenge card, so to say, which each and every faction has, except Night's Watch, I guess. Uh, so, and Free Folk? No. Okay, but whatever. Uh, but the Realm Remains. Um, how strong is this quest card compared to what we know? I mean, when you compare it to something something else where we have the trigger, if something dies, there comes a token on, and there's a, a certain effect for this particular unit. So both But the Realms of... Uh, but the Realm Remains is more focusing on... It's, it's stacking up tokens, and you can use it more often. So how is the card compared to other quest cards or revenge cards? Uh, it's kind of snowball-y because, because you, uh, once you get it started it gets easier for you to progress the game uh, in, in your way and j just to get the step uh, up there to put to get at least one uh, token or other token out on this card mm. is maybe the hardest part depending on matchup mm -hmm. uh, against prefer you will uh, pr you'll probably get it really really fast mm -hmm. something like Baratheons or Starks will uh, make it a lot harder for you to get uh, at this one particular other token and um, I guess I would most I would mostly uh, just let the order token sit on this card to potentially combo it with cards like um, and, um, not tonight's of Hollow Hill yeah Forgotten Fellowship to remove the possible mm. weaken token or or not get it and um, if uh, certain cards are protected from collision tokens uh, against Baratheons or uh, other factions it definitely helps you control the game. Mm -hmm. So and the, and but the, just to get this one token up uh, really uh, is the first barrier you need to uh, set up. And if you draw it too late, you won't get any uh, um, <clears throat> benefit of it. Any, yeah, which is the case for each and every quest card, right? I yeah, mean, it depend, so, depending. If you uh, if you have a full board uh, until round five and then yeah. lose one unit, that nah, doesn't matter. You still get uh, progress out of your quest card. Yeah, but I still I still think and Randall, I do I I, I don't know about you, but it, I I still like. The, the, like the lower the lower effect while this card has an order token the attached unit may not gain condition tokens i feel this is pretty strong right not mm -hmm. gaining any condition tokens just imagine it on the infantry like on the on the on the uh, attacky infantry or the calf or whatever it's it's uh, it, it I, I feel this is pretty strong for a quest card yeah it's it's super strong and you know, like Pasha was saying, you're probably just going to leave an order token on it unless it's a matter of life and death. Love you enough, know, like yeah. if you're mm -hmm. expecting your unit to get wiped out at the start of the enemy turn, then maybe you pop that order. Well, I guess it's at start of friendly turn, but you know, if you're expecting you're maybe going to be hit pretty hard, then you pop the order token to survive. But I think being immune to, immune from condition tokens is probably a more useful uh, ability off of this card. Yeah, true. Is there any other card you want to focus on, like maybe Knights of the Hollow Hill? Uh, because like the, the, these are cards that are just for the Brotherhood, while Sudden Retreat and Regroup and Reform is basically like a universal mm -hmm. thing we, we have out there. At, yeah, at, like, either as an yeah, yeah. There's a one thing to, to mention is the the fact that a couple of these cards require a morale test to be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's kind of a high degree of conditionality, I would say, in a in in this deck you know if if you're going to rank 
uh, different decks by conditionality. There's a couple of these cards that require you to pass a morale test for yep. anything to happen, uh, which is always a little bit uh, problematic, you know, because it's a, it's possible that you play this card like Knights of the Hollow Hill and your morale test fails and the card does nothing. So yep. um, it's it's worth pointing out that, that the Brotherhood in general and overall design, I think, is focuses a lot on morale and morale tests which kind of feeds into their lore a little bit of you know being uh having their faith tested and their uh you know they're these kind of small folk that are uh kind of uh, against all odds so yeah. it makes sense from a from a design standpoint and a lore standpoint uh, but it you do run the risk of a couple of your cards just not working if your dice don't roll the way you want Yep. But the the faction does though have some mechanisms to to help your morale, uh, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. And they do have other yep. other effects that will trigger off of passing morale tests. You know, exactly. like they can heal heal themselves off of it and, and things like this. So it, it is interesting to see a couple of their their unique cards uh, involve morale tests. Yeah, but but what 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 would we know from from other roller right roller units? We know that these cards are actually like in your favor, right? Because you want to play them, you want to do the morale test and you want to pass it and gain mm -hmm. a fate token or roller token in that case. So uh, it's probably fueling what we talk about later uh, about the, or w w w which we talk about now, uh, their faction card. So wait, wait, just, to, yeah. just to add to Max of Hollow Hill, if, if you don't pass the morale test, at least you get the three inch movement from it. True, true. So this, so just maybe you, you want to cancel the effect, but still this little bit of movement can help you in the, the upcoming situation you, you yep. play it. That's true. That's yep. true. It's two effects on there, yeah. So what I meant was we talk about the Brother Without Banners faction card, which uh, enables a few things. But what I, what, I, what I just meant is we will probably see then Baratheon units going into the Brotherhood, like the Faithful and stuff, which which will be fueled by the base deck, especially with certain commanders. But we will see that later. Like in terms of like we will do or we will do, we will we won't focus in this video on the fact that that uh, the Brotherhood can take one House Stark unit or one House Baratheon unit. We will do that in another video. So today we will just focus on the Brotherhood without banners. So probably we'll just. Um, talk about a little bit about the reduce um, reduce the cost of one attachment, but um, the the latter one is for another video. So still, brother without banners. I just said it can remove uh, can can reduce the cost of one attachment and has the access to House Baratheon and House Stark. So in 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 your overall opinion, Pasha, how how big is that for yes. the game and the Brotherhood specifically? Uh, I guess it's very big. So for me, it's a very big impact. I hope it's uh, a possible future for uh, House Bolton to get a similar treatment. And um, because of the um, kind of low uh, count on uh, releases for the Brotherhood, it, uh, it is uh, definitely um, an expected move to give them the flexibility they need. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it just opens up a, more, a lot of options for the Brotherhood. Even if you just want to play Brotherhood, you just, you're not sure, you don't just have four units. You suddenly have over, I don't know, 20, 30 units. Yeah, yeah. But you could, you could potentially buy yourself just to have a lot more flexibility in your list, plus neutrals. It's an, for me, it's amazing. Yeah. I, I love it, this extra room. Absolutely. They, they would, in certain parts, could uh, uh, ex, uh, expand on it. Yeah, definitely. So, R Randall, my main question, when I saw it for the first time, like, put the excitement to, to, to the side, when I saw it the first time, I was I was thinking, how hard will that be to balance out the game with this particular rule, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm really hoping, I'm, I, I'm really hoping and I'm confident Simon can, Simon can, can, can do it, they can pull it off. But still, I was thinking, as Pasha just said, you get you 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 instantly get access to like twenty or whatever units within this faction with an, with a base deck with their with their overall with with the reducement of an attachment and all that kind of stuff. So, how hard is that to 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 balance that out? I think it'll be a bit of a challenge. So, you, you, if you look at uh, you look at the neutral units, the un, the neutral units all get balanced and designed with the thought in mind that every single 
uh, faction with the exception of free folk can take them in their in their army so now simon when they're doing balance updates they're going to be thinking about the starks and baratheons inside of the brotherhood without banners so what i worry about is somebody who plays baratheon as one of my armies is that the baratheons are going to get they're going to be collateral damage mm. in the re rebalancing of the uh brotherhood without banners that you know that's a it's a concern but it, it may not be may not end up happening um uh, but it is something I've, I've heard other people talk about too that they don't want their baratheon or stark faction to get a nerf because of how strong a particular unit is when yep. in when in the brotherhood faction so it's a concern uh we'll see whether the concern ends up being merited or not i i hope not but uh in the meantime we'll all enjoy the thousands <laughs> enjoy of different the combinations and, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah definitely um i i was actually expecting when a second opinion i had or a second a second thought that came to my mind was when i when i read it i was like why didn't they just say that would have made balancing easier if you if if you would have just said uh they can just take the um the the baratheon uh, units with the the baratheon yeah, the units which can be lo loyalty agnostic mm -hmm. baratheons or <clears throat> and, and or um like just say car starks or the natural stark units not the not the umbers mm -hmm. not the mormons right that could be a thing but now it's out there as you said we will just enjoy the flexibility in terms of like doing all the list building mm -hmm. um yeah so that's great so we will focus that in another video so watch out for that so let's jump to the units then so as said as pasha said we have four units um three come um three three of them come with the uh with a starter you will have two peasants in there one brotherhood archers and one men at arms unit and there's another unit box for the brotherhood sworn knights which is yeah is it a heavy calf yes, yes. it's definitely yeah. a heavy calf um yeah. so so this is this is this is the portfolio so maybe we can start um um pasha with the peasants so the peasants there's a lot of discussion about the peasants and it's probably we we all know that gang up can be quite devastating and i think especially in that kind of play style what you want to establish with the brotherhood they can be really strong and for a four point unit i won't take it away from the defensive standpoint but disrupt on a four point unit for me it's pretty amazing but what do you how do you feel about the peasants i totally agree they're the very cheap activation uh, chef unit so uh, i guess in that most so depending uh, if you want to play an elite brotherhood list you won't you probably won't t take any peasants yeah but uh, if you want to achieve eight, act uh, eight activations two peasants will be mandatory mm -hmm. otherwise you won't uh, have uh, that impact and disrupt to protect your infantry or just to hold a uh, hold off a, a heavy calf lens charge is definitely amazing uh, very good for them uh, and yeah, it's, it's just like they, they crumble to ranged attacks, but weakness has to be there. And uh, their normal attack profile without a gang up unit is just bad. <laughs> yeah. But 12, 12 life points uh, on the on the field is very good. Yeah, it's very good. And I, I, I you know, I, I, I took a look at, uh, look at them at the at the Spiel uh, conference in Essen. So and I took one game with them. And it's so it, it, it's 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 just tremendous how 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 tanky they are with this disrupt factor and with the healing we just discussed with the base deck. It's so you you're not really really like when I I watched the second game and I was all the time I was thinking don't be so so afraid man because that guy who was playing that it was like really protecting them and keeping them back and I was like just push it man just push push them in there right because they won't die they won't die instantly so it was yeah it was cool to see how how they work um so Randall um one question for you on the peasants or on the fact that Pacha just said so do we do we do we need two starters when they come come out do we need two no, I, no. I mean, unless if you're that, I mean, if you're the kind of personality that buys that many, <laughs> you you already know you're going to buy two boxes. I mean, there's people out there that they want that many of, of, you know, they because they're thinking that they want to, they want to put four peasants on the table and they don't mind paying an extra hundred dollars to do that. But I I don't think you need more than two peasants if you're going to be playing locally or competitively. I I don't see it. But I'm you know 
I may eat my words. Maybe if this video will be viewed in three months, <laughs> three months from now, and that'll be a really, really uh, bad take. But I, I don't think you're going to need to. I was actually it. thinking about the men at arms and, and the archers more than the peasants because you have to. But um, I was just thinking oh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's a good buy, buy, buy for a buck, right? I mean, when you, when you, when you get with the two starters you have a lot more options when you want to play brotherhood without banners like just agnostically or just you know just the, the... yeah on their own yeah 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 four peasants two archers let's go all right you heard it man you heard it so <laughs> okay four peasants two archers and let's go all right so that's the peasant one so the basic unit for the brotherhood which is um not only lore wise cool which also brings a cool functionality on the table. Let's see if it's like too strong for four points getting this set up, but let's see. Um, or one, one last word on it. A morale six on the peasants is quite is quite a cool thing. But one 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 guy at the at the conference basically said, you know, when 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 people are raging through your town and like raping women and 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 like pillaging all all down your town, you get motivated, right? I mean, that's yeah. like, <laughs> so that's probably probably a good thing too. Uh, to remember when you talk about, I feel the... they have to they have to be pretty highly motivated if they've left their farm and all they brought with them are their pitchforks, <laughs> and the pitchforks and, their, and stuff. their shovels and stuff. So exactly, they have to be pretty torches. motivated. Let's yeah, burn and torches. Yeah, let's let, let's burn down everything. Exactly. <laughs> so the second unit, the men at arms, the already mentioned men at arms. Um, yeah, I just give it to you, Randall. How do you feel about this attacky infantry unit? I think they're pretty decent for for a six point unit. You know, the I think these guys are going to be competing a bit for whatever your Stark or Baratheon choice is. You know, a lot of people maybe want to bring the Kingsmen for one more point, or the Winterfell Guard, or She Bears or something. So I think these guys are in a little bit of a weird spot. You know, the peasants I think are are like an auto include in most lists unless mm -hmm. you're going for a very elite list. But I think the Men at Arms are. Uh, I think they're they're still a, a good solid pick. They're a, I think a solid option for six points, and I think taking them at six points rather than a seven point heavy infantry or elite infantry unit will free you up uh, an extra point to do something else with. So, I think at, at six points they're very solid. They're uh, I kind of don't really rate their ambush ability into their value too much because it's very situational for how you're using them. But even just uh, having crit blow and potentially hitting on a three plus with sundering is pretty great for a, a six point infantry unit. And their their dice decay is very nice at a seven yeah. six. Yeah. So as long as they're not on one rank, then they're they're pretty solid, I think. Yeah, I think you always have to look at them in in in, in the light of that again the faction card. You will reduce the point the the the, the cost of one attachment by one. So I think those guys mm -hmm. can really shine with a certain attachment which we will you know focus later but but I, I i think that's out there that you get this set up and just for like free you get one at one certain attachment which can make make them make them yeah make them really shine then mm -hmm. is there anything to add on the man at arms not really no everything said for me they're the least exciting unit oh really okay so, but 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 then if they are so so like, like let's say un, unexciting for you, the bro brotherhood armaments crit blow, we all know is pretty dice dependent, right? The control your opponent does not control crown, which we know from Baratheons. This attack uh, gains plus one to hit and sundering. How's that? How do how how is that together with the base deck or the commanders? I feel like the not control so the. the... So the base deck and the commanders and NCUs don't give give you any tools to deny the crown to the enemy. So if you want to take if you want to take it, he can. Yeah, uh, and you lose your bonus. So even then, they're still one of the better six point units because there are just a handful of uh, units that can get to three plus, or if they have uh, plus three to attack, uh, they're mostly on plus five armor and, and plus seven uh, moral, mm. except the. Uh, Iron Crew, uh, Iron Victory Crew, yeah, true. All right, so let's then go go to something maybe more exciting, as we heard from Pasha. So the Brotherhood Archers. So um, yeah, so Pasha, tell me, tell me, you need two archers for peasants. Why two archers? 
because you already have the front covered in peasants and you need to <laughs> okay. have something for the back line. Okay. Um, they have a very nice uh, interpre a new interpretation of tactical reposition mm -hmm. because it uh, only works if you're not in short range of an enemy unit. And, and if, if you're not, then you get a three inch maneuver that's a lot more flexible uh, than a tactical reaper, which just gives you a three inch shift. And it helps uh, their hidden shot ability to get into the flank with an additional two inch shift to uh, yeah. get the so up to five, right? Dishes, so, yeah. Plus five. Or if you combine it with uh, Barrick, you have an, an, a better way to trigger Sentinel or use Sentinel to get into the flank with a possible um, ah, no, 11 inch sh uh, move mm. at the end after an attack to uh, maybe get into the rear. Uh, so for me, they're a very, very uh, exciting unit and uh, definitely one of the better six point archers. Yeah. Most definitely. And which is, you, you know, Randall, we talked about when we did the Skyreach Bowman video, we talked about the ranking, the tiering of like six six point Bowman, mm -hmm. the Starks, the Boltons, the Skyreach. So where yep. do they fit? Where are where where are the Brotherhood archers when you think Stark, Bolton and Skyreach Bowman? Uh, well, if I mean, if, if we're not talking about Baratheon Lightbringers, then I'd put these no, guys. We, no, we don't. We never. We never. We just <laughs> keep that a secret that they're good. <laughs> I put these guys close to the top. If not the, if not number one, I would put them in like number two. They have uh, very exciting abilities. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I would. I'm still. I still think Lightbringers are the best six point infantry in the game. But if we're not talking about or a six point uh, archer unit in the game, but if we're not talking about Lightbringers, then these guys are uh, up there. They're super strong. Mm -hmm. um, the maneuverability of them is just insane. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. And For six me, movement, both... right? And six movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Pasha. Slightly better than uh, Lightbringers, and the top contender would be the Skyreach Bowman. Yeah, Skyreach Bowman are good too. Hmm. All right. So, how about the hidden shot ability, Randall? How How do you think about the hidden shot? I mean, ignores units and terrain for line of sight. We already know that from Boltons and Starks, which is which makes it pretty easy to position them. And which is really cool for them because they probably maneuver around, they maneuver anywhere. So they do not have to think about, do I still see, like, is there anything blocked in the way? They they don't care mm -hmm. as long as they're in reach, in, lo in, in, in long range. So they are actually in 14. So they, they are fine. So how, you, how do you feel about when attacking flank and rear stuff? Yeah, I think the value in these guys is, is in finding flank shots i think their their kind of volley shooting ability to ignore terrain and, and units is kind of like an insurance policy for these guys that they could still do some kind of damage even if they're not in a flank uh, because if you're if you're decent at, at maneuvering your units then that first ability isn't going to be too important i don't think anyway unless you're mm -hmm. in a, a situation where these guys are stuck in the behind your units and you're like double engaged and there's just a big wall of infantry in front of you um i think these guys are really designed to be sneaking around on the flanks and if uh if you're able to use them in that way then getting precision shooting into into enemies is is just pretty punishing yeah and especially with seven one, yeah. seven dice yeah, yeah vicious yeah. and precision with mm. seven dice on on a flank is pretty pretty rough yeah absolutely so now to the one I am most excited about is the Heavy Calf, Brotherhood Sworn Knights. So Brotherhood Sworn Knights, we already know the, the profile, like five movement, seven, five on threes, we know that. But the three, um, the three defense is not as common for that kind of attack profile and speed. So, um, yeah. So, Pascal, how do, you, how do you feel about the Brotherhood Sworn Knights? Uh, definitely one of the best heavy calf units in the game. Uh, good support piece for Brotherhood because of the uh, rally the small folk, not just uh, but because in most cases you will only have infantry supporting it and uh, so it doesn't really need the rally cry to, to work and uh, yeah, restoring two wounds is always good, especially with rebukers and reform uh, and other uh, support stuff and the possibility to get a, a, a last tap first tap with these guys and having rerolls uh, starting next turn through uh, because your opponent opponent won't be able to control the crown mm. is amazing. 
really high damage potential with for, uh, uh, 40 dice on uh, plus three potentially and sundering they will delete stuff yeah yeah so 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 you just said we, we're talking about we, we have to compare it with relic cry which which uh, always heals two wounds so it's a little bit worse than the regular relic cry because you have to destroy an enemy rank but still i feel what you said that this with their attack profile they do they shouldn't have too much problems doing it so yeah totally in there so yeah randall how how do you feel about the Brotherhood Sworn Knights? Uh, I wish these guys could change their name to Champions of the Stag and and come on a yellow card instead of a, a green card because mm. these guys are yeah these guys are great I, I think they're really nice I, I don't mind that the Rally the Small Folk is a bit more conditional than Rally Cry yeah I I think it suits this faction and I I don't like the copy paste of, of abilities over everything uh, in the game anyway so I, yeah. I like there being Talk a little bit that. of unique uniqueness even if it's uh it's even if it's uniquely like worse than an existing ability but yeah these guys are super strong they're not uh they're like the opposite of lance cab these guys just want to get in engaged in combat and and kind of slug it out i would say they uh because they have the re-rolls so you know top around you drop them on a drop on the sword get re-rolls and then if you're running like i mean we'll talk about uh, the commanders later but you could use assault orders with barrack take the crown for your next ncu activation smack something again with these guys and with a uh, seven dice or even five dice with sundering and re-rolls these guys are going to be deleting a rank easily i yeah. would say uh, unless they're weakened continuously and they have a very good dice pool of seven five you know like you look at the champions of the stag they've been nerfed down to a six four mm. so uh these guys are are just very very good they are eight points so they're going to be one of your your big uh pieces of your army if you take these guys but i think they can do a, a ton of work yeah and they're one of the few calf units um, well, let's say maybe the only calf unit that works very good with both neutral calf attachments mm -hmm. yeah with glory and the fortune seeker that's yeah. correct yeah, what I yeah. wanted to say is, we talked about the base deck. You also have the 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 the, the tools in your hand to uh, sudden retreat if they get into trouble. Mm -hmm. They can just sudden retreat, and then when you're when it's your turn, you have a free maneuver. You can charge in again, uh, and also you have the I forgot the name, but it's um, uh, the uh, the forgotten fellowship. So you probably can can bring those uh, guys really into into like enemy any enemy territory quickly by the end of the round probably and maybe charge in so um also also good so you have all the movement tools to bring them in the right spot to really to really do quite some damage yep yeah all right so i think that's it for the units so pretty exciting even though even even though we did not talk about starks we didn't talk about baratheons still still cool right so let's take a look at the uh roller or like the commanders so let's start with thoros of mirror um yeah so you get you get the faithful vibes right it's pretty close um so yeah randall guide us through thoros uh attachment first yeah so attachment he kind of comes with stalwart so he has this uh plus two morale um to his unit which is great so that means you can even throw him in a in a peasant unit and he's going to make those peasants even more resistant to morale uh checks yeah. and i was super excited when we saw the the picture of the back of the box that kind of got leaked where we we could see faith tokens on there um i thought that was that was awesome and these guys have like a couple of great abilities you know they have this ability to give the unit sundering and vicious which are two fantastic attack keywords and uh then this this ability to heal wound units uh with with the faith token so you know it says when an enemy in long range fails a panic test one friendly unit in long range of this unit can uh for, for each wound the enemy suffered that wound that unit suffer, uh, restores a wound so so thoris's unit can hit stuff really hard and then his unit can basically be like a medic uh for other units in your in your army so i i think the attachment the thoris attachment is is great yeah so P pasha how is that how how is his like um we talked about the base deck having some roller or like brotherhood specific cards making use of morale tests which would which fuels this commander pretty well um also or, or how, how do you feel about his three cards 
uh, in the light of the base deck and his attachment? Um, in light of his base deck, the, his cards are kind of okayish. For me, the best card would still be Fury, Fury Charge. <clears throat> mm. uh, it's uh, great on the offensive. Uh, it's not as good as uh, Rush of Aggression because you only get uh, a Panic Token, which is the worst token we, uh, we would like to uh, see on the enemy unit. Um, but still, Auto 6 Charge can uh, surprise the enemy uh, uh, in different situations. Uh, none, as a, none of his cards really work with his uh, uh, Heart of uh, Prayers to Relo uh, um, ability. Mm -hmm. The Last Kiss is very flavorful, very nice from feeling uh, from from uh, from feeling it, but um, very conditional. You have to lose a unit, and it has to be an attachment. But if you can, I guess in most cases you will just play this card for its second effect, you know, just throw it away. Or use it with uh, with, uh, with a potential uh, NCU we talk about later. And the worst card is for my for my taste, Loved by the Small Folk. And uh, it's because uh, most units have a moral of five and six and won't fail the panic test. So in most cases, it just doesn't hurt. Yeah, we know Love uh, by the Small Folk from from uh, Loras, right? Uh, Loras Commander, same card, and wh where where I, I I totally agree with you. Uh, that's probably the worst card that Loras has, also. Uh, but but yeah, um, Randall, anything to add? Is there is, is there anything? C can you make more of the tactics cards than than Pascal? Or so uh, when I saw Thoros, I got excited because. Uh... I'm on a lifelong quest to find a, a good home for a golden company elephant in a, in a list. So mm -hmm. when I saw his, his, uh, his, his cards and his attachment, I thought, you know, Thoros might be the man to make a, a <laughs> to make the elephant. Company elephant list work. Cause he's got the fiery charge, which I love that in, in Axel's list. Cause I I've run Axel elephant before because mm -hmm. you can panic a unit when you send in the golden company elephant, 12 inches across the table. Uh, panic the unit and then Thoros he has this ability now that if the elephant causes the enemy to fail the panic test he can pop one of his faith tokens uh, to heal either mm. the elephant or another unit so mm. you know I I'm gonna be using Thoros uh, with a golden company elephant whether it's a good idea or, or a bad idea <laughs> uh, so I'm excited for Thoros for for that reason and for other reasons we'll talk about later when we get yeah, to totally attachments later. but yeah, yeah, yeah. uh and yeah then last kiss is very it's almost like a like a friendly version of take the black i would say you know you, you're restoring one you're keeping one of your own attachments alive a little bit i but yeah i, I don't think his attach his tactics cards are amazing but uh mm. they are gonna be fun uh, for me at least um, yeah yeah, I can so. appreciate that they start the or, or that that they put the start of any turn draw tactics cards in there. That can be useful in certain mm -hmm. situations, and we know that know the, know that from other commanders like Jamie, or like other commanders that have situational cards. So um, yeah, I appreciate that. All right, mm -hmm. so I know that a lot of people are way more excited about Beric, uh, because Beric uh, obviously brings brings the assault orders, but also has the Sentinel, also has the Pathfinder. So, Randall, how do you feel about Beric? Don yeah, I mean, Beric is, he's the man. He's know? the man. <laughs> I don't, I think he's, he's the one everybody's excited about. Yes. And yes. he, yeah, he's, he's the best commander in the army. I think we, I, we haven't talked about uh, the third one, but I, I'm the most excited about Beric. He just has such a, a solid, 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 solid attachment card. And then, uh, pretty decent uh pretty decent tactics deck you know anytime a, a tactics yeah. deck has assault orders in it it's it's gonna be up there so yeah yeah his his set of abilities is, is just so good you know sentinel pathfinder due to the to, to the crown in a in a army that already takes a bunch of morale tests and sentinel is just such a i don't know sentinel and then pathfinder i don't know there's just so many so many like a, a ways you could so many things you could put him into that would make uh so such good use of these abilities like you know i know you'll you'll probably talk about it in another video about list building and everything but yeah, i mean yeah, like will. you can just imagine like rose knights in this guy getting free maneuvers and charges but not worrying about bogs and stakes and then 
getting morale tests and doing auto wounds to things. It's just, you know, there's so many exciting combos with this guy. Uh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm psyched for, for bear. Yeah, totally. So Pascal, you talked about the, the archers. Um, yeah, maybe you can, you can, um, bring us in on this secret. Yeah, the secret is Barry works uh, perfectly with infantry uh, in melee or ranged because with the archers you just get the uh, sentinel trigger, move uh, uh, six inches into uh, their flank, maybe you get the, the um, chance to use uh, the, tact the tactical maneuver again for another three inches and then shoot into the flank. Uh, the only downside is that uh, assault orders doesn't work with ranged units, but I guess that's fair enough. But you can put him in so many units uh, where where he shines. Uh, it's uh, 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 refreshing. And, it's re uh, and, yeah. and all his cards uh, work with. Uh, so looking at the triggers, um, there are no downsides with the main deck. Yes, like you have made with certain other commanders where you have uh, suddenly uh, um, 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 thinking about Messi, for example, where he has uh, two cards in his in his. Uh, in his own tactics deck, like work uh, work on a melee attack uh, mm -hmm. after a unit is melee uh, g g got attacked by a melee attack, and you already have that in the base deck. So you're uh, clumping up your hand with uh, a lot of the, the tactic cards that mm -hmm. work on the same trigger, and you don't have that with the brother one. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I also feel on the one one sentence on the attachment duty to the crown is not like the biggest thing he brings but still i like it i mean it's fueling the base deck it's fueling the lore right it i i, I just like it every time pa you pass a morale test that guy restores one wound even more when you have the crown i like that so let's focus one like one one like two two to three sentences on um uh six times too many and lightbringer so six times too many is obviously pretty situational while Lightbringer is not a situational, but but maybe maybe Randall, you can you can talk about those specific Brotherhood cards or Barrick cards once more. Yeah, six times too many. I mean, it's it's good. You can you could cheat death once. I think this is gonna trigger a whole bunch of targeting conversations again. You know, and we'll we'll get dragged back into what is what does targeting mean? What is actually targeting? You know what who is being targeted by various abilities. So, uh, you know, I think the second part of that card is going to cause some, a lot of conversations around the table of yeah. maybe, maybe not at a high, high competitive level where people have a good understanding of targeting, but like speaking for myself, I trip over targeting issues all the time. So I could see there being some disagreements about, about, about targeting here. Um, mm. But you know, we just got rid of Boisterous Charisma that that was uh, kind of a, a bane on certain players' existence because of the targeting issues that uh, that it caused. So I, this is a little bit more of a niche case, maybe. But um, mm. I mean, I think it's a cool card. I, I I don't think it's I think his most powerful cards are going to be Assault Orders and Lightbringer, personally. But um, it's a you know, it's it'll help him cheat death. So okay, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. All right, so that's for commanders. Why there is a third one, but we thought we will make a little breakout session on Lady Stoneheart, so we'll talk about that later. But before we go to um, Lady Stoneheart, we will have to cover the attachments and the really, really interesting NCUs. So for attachments, you get Beric also as an attachment in the base box. You get Thor's of Mirror also as an attachment in the base box, and you get um, Tom, uh, Tom Seven Strings also in the um base box or in the starter box and don't so, forget Le lemon cloak yeah he's he will be he will, he will be on the next slide because ah, because yeah. it, it should be <laughs> readable so pasha how about how about these let's start with beric and thoros how good are those attachments are would you really step down from beric commander to use beric dondarian attachment what's the deal here Luckily, for most tournaments, there's two list formats, so I won't have to, to play two, uh, two uh, lists with Beric. So I, I will have the chance to play the Beric Nadarian as an attachment if I want to play uh, a Thoros commander or a neutral commander. And still very amazing, uh, very strong, getting two plus two attack dice. Those times are long over. Now they're uh, um, 
getting a, a reshine mm -hmm. and uh, still cheating death with his attachment if he can destroy an enemy unit depending on the situation it can happen quite a lot yeah and uh, depending on in, in which unit uh, you have it or you're just like uh, if you play Thoros commander and you're like you know i like last kiss switch him over here have him in Thoros. Uh, every time i pass a morale test i get two faith tokens now so uh, i'll pump it up even more yeah absolutely so how how we how 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 is that compared to Thoros of Mirror attachment? As I, I guess, as for my taste, Beric attachment is a lot stronger than Thoros. Yeah. Luckily, if you play uh, another commander, you have to, uh, if you if you play Beric com uh, commander, the choice of attachment doesn't matter because you can't pick the Beric attachment. Yeah. Uh, Thoros, um, I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, reinforcements is okay. Relentless is good. But uh, we don't see Relentless uh, that often anymore. Uh, mostly in Night's Watch. When uh, Night's Watch, yeah, Swarm Brothers, something. So uh, yeah. Swarm, uh, Swarm Brothers are good with it. And yeah. um, Greyjoys don't use the attachment variant uh, of uh, Victarion, mostly the Commander version. So uh, Thoros will have a problem to be played because there are several other options um, worth one point that are uh, a lot better. Uh, and a, less, a lot less situational mm. because uh, if you put him into a melee unit, your enemy can play around it. If you don't have a unit that can definitely stick to the enemy and will uh, charge after uh, every unit possible, so yeah. your um, your enemy uh, has to attack it. Yeah. True. Yeah. So so like on Tom Tom Seven Strings then Randall Tom Seven Strings one point order taunt. So, like, the obvious thing, what everyone would would probably think about, is put them in peasants and um, push mm -hmm. them up, right? Do what they do and taunt people into it. Um, probably, probably not, I don't know. Um, how do you feel about Tom Seven Strings? Yeah, he's okay. I mean, taunt, I think he's one of the, he's probably the least exciting of the attachments for me. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, the Roman peasants. I just I think there's going to be a lot of competition for for that one yeah. point discount you have. I, you know, for me, Tom Seven Strings isn't going to be making it into a lot of my list at least to begin with. I yeah, I think so Lem. I think Lem has is more exciting in, in peasants to be able to make them hit a little bit harder. Uh, they're going to be taking a lot of casualties, so you can expect that they'll have two of those choices before too long, and then. Beric, I if I'm ever running Thoros Commander, I I think no matter what, I'm just gonna have to yeah. set a budget a budget for Beric to yes. be in that list no matter what because he's just it's so cool. Um, the two attack dice and then being able to cheat death on his own card and then uh, you know the last kiss card keeping him alive it's just so thematic and cool. I even if it doesn't end up being a very meta choice, I. Beric is gonna have to be there. It's yeah, just he needs to be there. So cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, so, Tom Seven Strings. I'm I'm not super excited about. Yeah, I guess no one is. So you already mentioned it. There's Hot Pie Angai or Angie Ang Angai. Angai. I would say. Angai. Okay, let's say Angai. Right. So Gendry and Edric Dane. So um, yeah, Hot Pies, Hot Pie. Hot pies making hot pies. So like, like each time this unit activates, it removes a condition token. And if you control the crown, this unit restores a wound. Um, yeah, maybe Pascal gu guide us through um, these these four NCUs, starting with hot pie. Uh, hot pie is definitely one of the best attachments for the Brotherhood. The uh, condition removal is very strong. If you don't have him in mind, like uh, against certain matchups like uh, Baron Mattel, mm -hmm. he's very, very strong. Um, uh, he works with uh, the Knights of Hollow Hill. Mm -hmm. no, just um, start of round, move your uh, the, the best choice could be archers. Let's just say um, start of round, you move your archers into the back line, activate them, remove the weakened token, and just push the damage into the rear. That's really devastating, potentially healing uh, uh, one wound if, uh, if possible. A uh, very good combo piece uh, will uh, definitely see a lot of play. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's don't talk about Angai. He's the last place on the attachments. Uh, I, I, 
also I've got two issues with him. First, he doesn't look like uh, in the books. I don't know. <laughs> from, from the picture. Uh, the I soapbox, like... Randall. The soapbox. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> we have to step up. All right. All right. We stepped up. Let's go, Pascha. Um, pa Pascha. Let's go. So just from the picture, uh, he just doesn't look like uh, the book description. Yeah. And two points for swift retreat and outflank. Oh, come on. Come yeah. On. That's not worth it. So uh, all things mm. still isn't worth one point. Uh, maybe in an active eight activation uh, uh, list, if he would cost one point, he could you, you could see play. Then he would be okay. Wouldn't be the best. Wouldn't be the worst. But in this iteration, no. No way. Okay. So how about Gendry? How about Gendry then? Uh, I I already experienced Gendry playing against Coelion, and really tough guy um resilience plus the possible uh, one to defense is very strong um um Coelion put him into the peasants to make them more survivable very good choice um but you could also pu put him on some um, frontline unit like the winterfell guard for my uh for my choice mm. to make him even more survivable and definitely worth two points in in this iteration very very good very strong uh, then you can combo it with Taurus and Last Kiss and put it into your main unit if, if your peasants die. Then you've got a, a huge ball of attachments running towards you. Uh, very flavorful. Yeah. And Edric has the um, Barrett's Vessel um, ability and regroup. So there are a few units where um, this regroup, regroup ability comes into play. You have some attachment cards, uh, uh, some tactic cards where mm -hmm. you can use uh, regroup and reform, like um, swift retreat. Nee. How was it called? No, it is it is swift retreat, and you can make use of regroup from him. Uh, yeah. nee, nee, no, not swift retreat. I mean the um, sudden sudden retreat. Or, yeah, sudden retreat. Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Sudden sorry, retreat. sorry. Sudden retreat, and then you can make genau. use of then regroup. You yeah. From the regroup, and yeah. the best inter uh, and the possible interaction would be to. Um, put Edric into a into a Thoros unit so he can be attached to it. And every time Thoros unit makes the makes a morale test, Barrett's unit, where uh, Edric is not in uh, in it, gets a faith token too. Because for all abilities, Edric's unit yeah. counts as Barrick. So uh, Barrick's, uh, also Barrick's ability doesn't check if he's in, the, in this unit or in, it could be any unit, but which mm -hmm. would be Barrick's unit. Yeah. So you have the potential... Uh, uh, of getting more faith tokens out for Beric. Yeah. Is there anything particularly good or bad about the restriction that he needs to be included in a, in a, in, a, in, in, in the unit of Thoros or ignoring the, or is it, as you just said, is that, is that really big? I don't think so. I, but, but I always thought it says he may, if, was he may maybe, be, yeah, it's not yeah, a it's restriction. Not, it's it's not just a, a bonus. So, so when yeah. he's in Thoros, he may be, like like ignore the, the usual attachment, attachment limit he said yeah in, a, in one unit on his own so yeah totally fine. yeah so that's what i meant is it is it is it, would that mean you would always include him to thoros or would you say no it would probably mm, no, be somewhere um, else it depends on what yeah. uh, commander unit you choose um edric dane uh, really shines in uh, stormcrow dervishes so if you choose to put thoros into dervishes as well where uh, definitely a good choice yeah so it's why possible. not yeah 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 it's possible yeah okay so that's on the attachments so you see and you always have to put that light again on there that you that you um reduce the cost of each and every attachment by one the, the first one you do you reduce by one so let's go now to the ncus so you get uh, two ncus in the base box in the, in the starter box and you have thoros of mirror and Lady Stoneheart, which we will cover in a second, in the Heroes Box 1. So let's start with that old witch, the Woods Witch, Randall. Ghost of High Heart. How do you feel about her? I think she's very strong. I I, yeah. I mean, she, like I was saying earlier, they this faction has ways to increase your morale. And she is, is one of those. And then uh, this is a faction that is usually going to want to have a, at least a one unit of peasants getting beaten up in the front lines and she can make the peasants more resilient but then as they die she is throwing tokens or as they're getting beat up she throws tokens out 
And uh, an interesting note here is each time a rank in that unit is destroyed, it doesn't say destroyed by a melee attack or anything. So mm. you can trigger your own destruction through things like regroup and reform. So, you know, when you're playing regroup and reform and taking peasants out of a peasant unit, those peasants move over and then they can throw some tokens out on their way out. Mm. So um, I, I think she's very very strong ncu uh good for four points i'm i would very likely be bringing her in a lot of lists yeah i feel so too so so pasha compared compared to ravella smallwood which comes with three tokens each time like or start, start of any turn you can remove an order and a tactics cards or and and a tactics card and then you would restore two wounds and if you're on the last rank remove one condition token from my point of view doesn't feel good, doesn't feel great, even though it fuels into the gameplay what we're trying to, to look at or what we're trying to achieve with Brotherhood. But how do you feel about Ravella Smallwood? Four points. Mm. Looking at possible lists, she's not the most important choice, probably the least choice, yeah. but the last choice you would choose. Uh, the only upside she has is the flexibility of friendly turn that you can play it, uh, as a, that you can trigger it with in addition to uh, tactics cards or uh, uh, Thoros of Mirror. Mm -hmm. If you have an, as an NCU, this is her only don't, uh, upside, and that's it. If you can remove a condition token, it's a nice bonus, but nothing too impactful. And um, paying one tactic card. Uh, looking depending on the game state is a very tough choice yeah yeah i feel so too late game probably fine to play, to remove something like love quite a small fall glass kiss uh, or uh, regroup and reform if you don't have that uh, good uh, that more any many targets or even knights of hollow hill if you can't use it anymore but uh, for me she's a hard pass a lot no, i have a, a question so I have a question oh, let's about go. let's go about her. So now let's say like I kind of she's kind of a little bit of like a Wendemir healing effect that where it's a start of friendly turn, but it's it doesn't conflict with orders and tactics cards because it's an NCU effect. Now let's say you have a unit that's very beat up and it's a unit you want to keep alive. Now does this trigger conflict at all with but the realm remains? Like if, if you have, but the realm remains on one of your units with an order token, can you use Ravella Smallwood to heal two units and remove a condition token and then also pop your, but the realm remains token yes. to heal yes, you three can. more. Yes, so you then can. you would possibly heal a unit halfway to full again. Yeah. And you can so, uh, additionally play, uh, if you're activating it after that, take up the sword or anything uh anything, anything mm -hmm. similar yeah yeah so a lot yeah, of healing sorry. in one go they're all they're, yeah. they're all non-conflicting so yeah I, I think i think some people are sleeping on her a little bit i think she does she is not as as appealing as the other ncus but i think in the right circumstances she could be quite strong um but, but the the thing is, it's very conditional, and there's the opportunity cost of if you bring her, that means you're not bringing Ghost of High Heart or Thoros or, you know. Especially Thoros, the... right? Because he's basically there mm -hmm. for the same thing, keeping units alive, healing them right. back. So that would be my next question, yeah. right? When we compare it to Thoros of Mir, the Ember... So he's he starts or he, he he's he's gaining up tokens each time each time uh, there's a, um, uh, a rank destroyed. And then he can use these tokens, or he he goes on his own. He restores up to two wounds, and then he can use up to two tokens to restore one wound to or an, another wound. So basically, three or four wounds. So when you compare Ravella and Thoros, uh, Pascal, who would you choose? So obviously, it would be Thoros. Um, yes, and because yeah. of one added upside, you can easily re replace the crown zone with a with a way better effect for yourself. And deny the enemy the possibility of yes. controlling the crown. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and this is another one of those effects that doesn't say uh, each time a, a rank in an enemy combat unit is destroyed by, by an attack. Or, yeah. Or by so attack, yeah. yeah. So this could be triggered from hits, 
regroup you know, and reform the enemy has, and has regroup and reform yeah or yeah like if your enemy if the enemy player is like a Greyjoy and they're moving units around with raiding call or regroup and reform thoros is just he's just like getting showered with uh order tokens you know from not even necessarily your own actions but your mm -hmm. your enemy enemy actions are potentially feeding thoros uh order tokens to the point where he might be able to restore three three or four wounds every round you know you don't know um it, yeah so i think he's potentially going to be very powerful healing and see but then you have to consider that means you can't bring him in your army as the commander or attachment but i, I think his his ncu is so strong that unless you're running the, the thoros commander you're probably gonna probably pick him consider yeah. yeah bringing him yeah all right so now we will you know step our move to our little breakout session to lady stoneheart um yeah so Catelyn stark uh ladies or la like we we all know what happens in the book so we do not do not because the video is already an hour long so we won't won't iterate on what's happening but Catelyn stark basically comes back as an undead revengeful person and wants to take revenge on all these all all the people that you know did bad uh, or that 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 didn't do didn't uh, didn't didn't mean too well with her family her right exactly mm -hmm. so she 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 comes back joins the brotherhood and um yeah so there are two versions of her there's the commander version and there's the ncu version both of them gain the unending vengeance um effect or the entry to this so unending vengeance basically um says there is a there is a the, the downside is you can't use those attachments or units yourself but you also get a uh, re-rolls and uh, on charge distance dice when performing uh, charge actions against these units listed all the all the bolton units or the bolton attachments or commanders um and unit so so th that that's an upside that's probably like a small thing when considering taking her as NCU uh, or a commander, but still, it's a flavorful thing. I really like it, and as we did in our pre-discussion, or as we stated in our pre-discussion, pro it, it, the most use will be probably um, done by it against Ramsay Snow, two-point attachment, maybe, probably. Um, but again, you'd al also have the downside that you can take those attachments. And it works. And you and go. it works against Lannisters. Yeah, all, all Lannisters, yeah. All Lannisters, yeah. Yeah, true. That's correct. Okay, so let's start with her NCU. Um, Pasha, vengeance at any cost. An influence, the first influence we see um, in, the, in the roster of the NCUs, guide us through it. Uh, it's the second influence. Ghost of Fire is also an influence. Oh, true. True, yeah. Um, a free wound for actions is, for my taste, very strong. Uh, um, as a very, very strong. Um, even if you... As a, against calf units, two free wounds is always nice. Against starts with their, uh, a lot of pets, it's nice. Against free folk with all their stinky pets, it's really, really nice to mm. uh, just throw it on them and say, no, either you do it and they die, and or Baramir do it, and it doesn't matter to me yeah. if he does. Yeah. Uh, just do whatever you, uh, whatever you want. Uh, I probably would copy Jacken, uh, so just play a uh, with, with Jacken in combination just to have it on the second unit and be like, you can do whatever you want. You will, yeah. you will eat free wounds everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Especially against uh, the zoo, it's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. The free rerolls on uh, melee attack die is okay. So yeah. A nice benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, if your enemy decides to just let his unit sit, uh, sit there, um, four points. Ah, I don't know. Maybe she could even be five. Could even be five, uh, be uh, cost five points. Mm -hmm. It would still be okay. Mm -hmm. And the only downside is you won't have Beric. Yes, and uh, yeah, that's that... okay. So that's uh, definitely a reason why she's four points, not five, because you can't uh, probably play with Beric. Yeah, probably. So, so Randall, the fact that Beric Dondarrion can't be in this army. How big is that? Does that does that put her on the bench for you, or do, or or would you say no? She's still a valid choice to use in it as 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 an NCU. Uh, so I will just use Thoros. Or how do you feel about it? Yeah, it's a yeah. The thing 
to think about is you can only take her in a Thoros list or a neutral commander list because you can't take her in a barrack commander list and obviously you can't take her in a list that she's the commander of so i would not say the if attachment i'm running either right and not the yeah, not, and yeah. the, the 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 great one we talked about the lightbringer one right so. yeah so when you're running a thoros list you have to decide whether you take her or whether you take the the two point lightbringer or azora high attachment which yeah. is uh i mean she is super strong i i, I can't add too much to what pasha said it's just i mean getting free wounds on on cab and and solo units it's just it's crazy the, yeah. um so yeah it's um for me i'm probably going to be kind of in the pro barrack camp just for you know fanboy purposes but that was uh, my final question yeah you too pascal your te team team barrack team, team yeah, barrack let's go okay <laughs> all right all right so let's go to the commander so there's catlin stark lady stoneheart commander um She's right here. She comes with horrific visage and intimidating presence, which all which we all know is quite great. We all know that from Ruse Bolton in in uh, Blackguard. So we know how good that is, how good that that unit can be pushed up the middle. And again, we have to think about it can be still she can't be taken with Bolton Blackguard. Right. We know that. But um, she. she <laughs> She 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 doesn't need to because she doesn't need to, to to make use of all that all that stuff because she brings it on on their own. So when you when you think about you can think about the peasants. You could also think about each and every like Baratheons, right? You can imagine that with 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 uh, Rose Knights, right? <laughs> you will just they will just sit, right? That will be your thing in the middle. So oh, queensmen, um, queensmen, queensmen, or, same. Uh, or maybe even better, the Halberdiers. Yep. Taunting even things. better taunting things into you right that's that's true so yeah that's basically the attachment which which is is cool works well and, and we all know intimidating presence can be can be devastating too the plus one wound from failing panic test the minus one to morale so you basically fir first thing you do minus four plus one wound that hurts that will hurt all right so let's not focus on the attachment because we know it's good so uh randall how do you feel about price of failure lash out and vengeance in blood which vengeance uh, in blood is probably the only unique one right is it or is yes. it even unique yeah, yeah it, it is yeah, unique. It's, it's yeah. Unique. yeah uh i mean these are all very strong cards i've lash out is is i've it's been situationally use, useful for me i've used it the most in uh gray worm uh, you know in targaryen list but i think it might have even more use in the brotherhood without banners because of how many wounds you're going to be expecting peasants to be taking mm -hmm. So uh, that's a pretty strong card, and it's wounds, it's not hits. So you could be really dunking on some on some more expensive units. Price of Failure is a pretty insane card, yeah. considering the Brotherhood can take Riders of High Garden, the Tully Cavaliers, and if they're diving into something with Gang Up, you know, you're you're just auto hitting ten hits. It's it's crazy. And then Vengeance in Blood is a is a really cool card. It, it's also an argument for maybe putting Catelyn into a, a ranged unit. You know, put her into a, a unit of Lightbringers on on a flank of a unit, or put her in a unit of the Brotherhood Archers. And then when one of your your friendly units is uh, is getting beat up, she just can fire into into something. You know, it kind of is a waste of her attachment card a little bit. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, these are these are all very strong cards. And I'm yeah, she's she looks like a very uh, very strong commander. Pascal, you were shaking your head. What was it? No, I don't feel like uh, horrific visage is wasted if you use it on the ranged unit. It's more like uh, you don't want to hit that unit button, yeah, so it's a the range yeah. unit is just more safe. Uh, or you can push her, put her into a melee unit and just say, "I stick it into your face," and you may hit it. You may hurt yourself way more than myself. I probably have lash out in my hand. Uh, do whatever you want with it or run away it doesn't matter to me yeah i would probably st oh, I, I i'm still at that that you would pro I, w w when when i will build, build my first list with her I w i'm still probably my first try will be to have something like high defensive unit and pushing it up the middle to have to have her down the middle with lash out in my hand and with all the other stuff that you can you can do with all the healing right you have this unit with the, when when the healing machine is going 
this unit will just sit and will all the time have horrific visage with the intimidating presence that will just hurt right and your archers can go around your calf can move quickly so there is a lot of stuff to do with her right i feel um yeah imagine her in thorn watch and how annoying that would be uh Oh, her yeah. charging in, retreating, <laughs> and then you you attack the the thorn watch, and then you have to take a horrific visage panic test, and yeah, then you can vengeance and blood to charge back in. Yeah, it's, there's just so many really cool and annoying. Yeah. Or you swift uh, retreat, or just hit, yeah. or just hit her, uh, hit the enemy unit and just retreat. Yeah, you, you mm -hmm. back up and like ah, do it again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So many memes with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I'm totally, I, I totally love it that she's now in the game, right? This undead Catelyn Stark, I really like it. All right, so that ends our full review of the units, attachments, and CU of the Brotherhood Without Banners. So final question to both of you. Are they broken? Are they too no. good? Are they, is it, is it too... Is it too hard to balance with Baratheon and Stark's unit? What is your final take on the Brotherhood when we finally you know, go to play it in December. Maybe start with Pascal. Uh, I, 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 I only had one match against them and they didn't feel broken. They felt actually very fair. Uh, and they, against certain factions, they will do likely dominate. If you uh, pick Kettler against Lensters, you will definitely have a fun time. And um, the most interesting choice for me would be if I, if I would choose the Brotherhood uh, version or the tactics version of each uh, uh, f fidget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. So, Randall, what do you think? How good is the Brotherhood really? Strong, but not broken, I would say. Mm -hmm. I, like when when the Martell faction came out, they came out at a very high power level. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of questions about, are they too powerful? Do they need to get nerfed? Because they came out just swinging out the gate but you know we we're now i'd say what three or four patches later since the martels came out maybe what four patches and the amount of tweaks that that faction has received has been extremely minimal and yeah, yeah. they're not they haven't been just at the top of the of the rankings the entire time they've been fluctuating with everything else and mm. I think the Brotherhood will be very strong. Uh, I think there will maybe be some some balancing issues just related to the balancing of, of units uh, between factions, you know, the Baratheon and Starks. Uh, but that's going to be for the developers to figure out. But I'm, I nothing that I've seen tells me these guys are going to completely destroy the game. I think they're going to be an extremely fun and very popular faction. I think they're going to draw in new players, which is good for all of us. Yeah. And I am. Yeah, I'm just can't wait to play them and uh, can't wait to see what kind of crazy things people do with them. But yeah, I don't think they're going to be brokenly, yeah. stupidly overpowered. I think they'll be very strong and there's going to be a thousand different ways that people are going to play them. And I'm excited to see and hear about every single one of them. Absolutely. And maybe my one final one final com comment from my side, who was able to, to, to have them in my hand again at the conference uh, at Spiel in Essen here in Germany. Um, they, those sculpts are just amazing, right? Um, mm -hmm. All of them, all of them. And each and every unit comes with four sculpts, not three. Um, we like, like, uh, it's, it's kind of awkward. Each and every unit comes with a, well, not the archers, but they have bannermen, like <laughs> holding banners. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I take it, whatever, right? The sculpts are still great. Um, yeah. So definitely check it out. There's a there's a video up up on top where we take a deeper like like a close look uh, at the at, at the sculpts uh, at Spiel. So definitely check it out. So thanks both of you for giving me uh, or giving us the these insights, these uh, this review of what we can expect in December. And you guys check out the next video where we will focus on. Um, the list building with Starks and Baratheons. So definitely check it out and keep a watch out for Randall's channel where we, where you will also see in the, in the near future, you will see some, some brotherhood without uh, banners content and song, song, song content in general. So definitely check it out, give him a sub and a like, and uh, just stick around. And uh, yeah, I think there's nothing more to say for all of us until we meet again. Roll those crits guys.
Come for the hits and stay for the crits.